the origin, why? Let's just say this room, you know, we have a frame of reference, is this room. So this is X, this is Y, and this is O. So that's, let's say, us. So this frame of reference is called S. There's a Z axis coming out. So this frame of reference is S. That's the frame of reference of the room, let's say. Okay, you know, maybe that's the, the corner over there is the origin, and we have an x-axis to the right, y-axis up, z-axis out. Right? Let's just say this, we are in this frame of reference. That's our origin right there. And what if there's a, another frame of reference coming in along the x-axis? Maybe a truck, a train, an airplane, whatever, but coming in at constant velocity along the x-axis. So that's this O prime, that's the origin of that frame of reference, X prime, Y prime. So imagine there's uh, someone, imagine there's a, let's say it's a truck or a train. The x-axis of this frame of reference is parallel to our x-axis. Right? But this is a moving frame of reference and moving at constant velocity so, it, so that it is inertial. So you know, let's say this is a train and you know, somebody is sitting in the train or right, with another friend. Right? So to them, they have an origin, they have an x-axis, they have a y-axis, and they have a z-axis. But this axis, this is this other frame of reference which is called S prime. So this would be x prime, y prime, z prime. And uh, that's what this represents. Right? S prime is this moving frame of reference, and it moves with velocity u. And u is the symbol for the velocity of this frame of reference, s prime, relative to the room. And it's, u is this way, in the direction of, it's moving along the x-axis, right? And Let's suppose that there's a master clock at the origin here, you know, that keeps time, T prime, for, for, so for the people in this train. And us, we have a master clock at the origin which keeps our time in our frame of reference in this room. So, you know, any events happening, we can use our clock at the origin. Any event happening, these people can use their clock at the origin. And suppose that when when this frame of reference, S prime, when the two origins combine, the two T's are, the clocks are synchronized so that the frame of, the time in this frame of reference in the lab, T is equal to zero, at the same instant that T prime is equal to zero in the moving frame. So at T is equal to zero for both frames, the origins coincide. But in general, you have a frame of reference. I'm gonna probably use a different letter, a different color here. So we have, this is Y prime, this is uh, X prime, and then you have Z prime coming out, so this is S prime, and this is moving with a speed U relative to this, relative to someone in the room. So it's like the train is moving at 40 miles an hour to the right, to your right. So that, that will be 40 miles an hour. And this is constant. So t equals t prime equals zero at x equals x prime equals zero. <clears throat> so when their origins coincide and the origin of the moving frame is O prime. And the origin of this frame is just O. So someone keeps track of the time over here, that would be t, and someone in here, that's it's t prime. So the question is this. Um, Suppose, that, so this happens when the two origins coincide. And then this one keeps moving. And suppose that some event happens. Maybe there's an explosion over here, boom. Some event happens, something happens. I don't know, there's a firework, boom, boom, whatever. So the question is this. So if, if there's some event over here, right? Then 
what are the space coordinates of that event as measured by someone here and as measured by, I don't know, a green man, probably in this other frame of reference. So what are the space-time coordinates of this event as measured by this person? Well, in his frame of reference or her frame of reference, it would be x, y, z, and t. It happened, I don't know, at two, at two minutes from when they were both next to each other. Now, what would be the coordinates of that same event as measured by this person? So according to this person, right, the x axis, the x coordinate is this. So that person will measure x prime, y prime, z prime, and t prime. Right? So these are the space time coordinates of this event as measured by this person, let's say us in the room. Boom, there was an explosion over there. And, oh, it's so many meters this way, so many meters this way, and so many meters deep, and you know, two seconds after the two frames of references coincided at the origin. But the people in the train, to them, oh, you know, this is my origin, so the x coordinate is this, x prime, y prime is this, and z prime, is whatever, and t prime, but my clock reads something else, right, t prime. So what is the connection between this coordinates as measured by this person and this coordinates as measured by this person? So that's what, I guess that's the question, right? And using the Galilean, so you, if you know the coordinates of this event as measured by the green man, say, and the same event as measured by the other person on the ground by us in the room, right? The, the equations that relate the coordinates of this, of this event to the coordinates of the same event as measured by someone else, they're called the Galilean transformation equations. It's like you can transform the coordinates from one, you know, from one set of coordinates to another one. Now, what would those be? Well, those are the those are the ones. So, using not using Einstein's theory of relativity, not using that. Um, so, using the Galilean transformation equations. <laughs> you know, this is like Newton. So, what is the x-coordinate of this event? Well, to this person, the x-coordinate is this, right? That's x. Right? Now, to this person, what is the x coordinate of that? It's going to be this. X prime. The y coordinate will be as measured by this person, y, and as measured by this person, y prime. And the z coordinates will be z and z prime. Now, in the Galilean transformation equations, or in the Galilean Newton theory, right? Time ticks at the same rate everywhere. So for these people here in, in their equations, t prime, the two clocks are, you know, they were synchronized at the origin when they, the two origins coincided. It will stay the same because they'll both, both clocks are gonna tick at the same rate. So we have, you know, one of the one of the equations that transform from one coordinate to another one is this. Now, um, now according to this person. <coughs> Since the velocity of this frame of reference is u, and to this person the time that has elapsed since they were together at the origin is t, what is this distance? What is the distance that this green frame of reference is gonna move to the right t seconds later, as measured by this? How do you figure out how far something moves if you know the speed of it and how long it takes it to move? Times time. The speed times the time. Right. So this distance will be u times t. So, well, for the x coordinate, what is the relationship between this and this? Can you see that x equals x plus ut? 
right? Therefore, x prime is x minus dt, correct? Uh, since the motion is only along the x-axis, these two have to be equal. The motion is not along the y-axis. So y prime has to be y. And in the z direction, it's also going to be the same. And then for the times, we have this. So these are the Galilean transformation equations. Now, if I think of increments, an increment in time, you know, a little delta t and a little delta x or a little delta x prime, right? So if I take like differentials over here, this will be delta x prime equals delta x minus, now u is a constant, so delta u is zero, so this will be u delta t, right? And then this one will be delta y prime will be delta y, and this one will be delta z prime will be delta z, and delta t prime equals delta t, right? And uh, what if this is something, what if this is something at that location which is moving, maybe there was a firecracker that at that instant exploded and at that instant it was moving in some direction. So let's say it was moving like this. Now, that's the velocity that it would have as measured by this person over the velocity that it would have as measured by this person. Let's call it, I don't know, V prime. So V prime is the velocity of this object as measured by someone in this, in the train. And V is the velocity of this object as measured by someone in the room, in this room. So this velocity V, right, has an X component that would be you know, what if I divide both of these equations by, by delta t? So, divide by that looks horrible. the same as delta t, right, because of this. So then this becomes delta x prime equals delta t prime equals delta x over delta t, since these two are the same, minus u. And how much is delta t over delta t? I'll write it down so you see it. And then we have that. But what is this? What is the change in the x coordinate divided by the time? Velocity as measured, that's the x component of velocity as measured by this person, right? So this is v sub x prime, as measured by the, in the moving frame. And what is this? Velocity. As measured by the other person in the room. This is, this would be like in the train and this would be by the person in the room. This is one, right? So you get that v sub x prime equals v sub x minus u. And if I, if I rearrange this, let me do it down here. If I say V of X prime equals V of X minus U. Let's think of this as the, remember this was the truck and this was the ground. And let's say this was the baseball. So V of X prime is the x component of this velocity as measured by someone in the truck. So this is this would be the velocity of the baseball relative to the truck. Well, the x component. This would be, well, that's the velocity in the, the x component of the velocity as measured by someone on the ground, or the baseball. So the velocity of the baseball relative to the ground, and then minus u. And then we can do this. And what is u? u is the velocity of the truck relative to the ground. And if I solve for this, I gotta bring this over here. So I get that 
the velocity of the baseball relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of the baseball relative to the truck plus the velocity of the truck relative to the ground. This is the Galilean transformation equation that I used when we were considering, you know, the baseball is thrown at 40 miles an hour in the forward direction and the truck is traveling at 60 miles an hour. So this is the Galilean transformation equation. And if you ask, where does that come from? It comes from this. What if I take the second equation and I say, okay, like this one, and I divide both of those by delta t, delta t prime and delta t, since they are the same, I will just divide the left-hand side by delta t prime and the right-hand side by delta t. So this will become delta y prime over delta t prime equals delta y over delta t. But what is this? That's the y component of the velocity as measured by someone in the train. And this is the y component of the velocity as measured by someone on the ground. So then I have this, that the y component of the velocity right, is equal to v. And if I do that with this equation, same thing, delta z prime over delta t prime equals delta z, but now over delta t, this is the z component of the velocity as measured by someone in the moving frame, and this is the z component of the velocity as measured by someone on the ground. So then you have this. So these are the velocity transformation equations this is what we learn in physics 185. Okay? Because in physics 185, we said that the thinking of time is like universal. Someone in the truck measures the same time interval between two events as someone on the ground. It will be the same. But as we saw, and as I'm going to show you, this is only good if the velocities are very small compared to the speed of light. Because if they're not, if they're not good, what happens is this is not true. So Einstein said, what's wrong over here? Why is it that this argument over here gives me the wrong answer when you talk about an observer, two observers measuring the speed of light in vacuum? Why, why is there a discrepancy, right? And Einstein had to think about this. He says, um, the ticking of time is just not the same for everyone, right, in space. And basically what he discovered was that how fast time passes by, how quickly the clock ticks up, depends on how fast you're moving through space. The faster you're moving through space, the more slowly time is going to pass to you as measured by someone else not moving with you. So essentially, that's why you hear this statement, you know, clocks slow down uh, the faster they move. But these are effects that we don't ever appreciate or notice, not appreciate, I shouldn't say that, I should say notice um, in our common everyday experience. I mean, if my wife gets on an airplane in John Wayne and decides to go to New York, which would be unfair, because I should be going too. <laughs> That's where we met and fell in love and so on, and got married and so on. So, but you know, if she were to go there, right on a plane, and I drop her off at the airport, then you know, we have, you know, well, what time is it right now? Well, it's still 10. Okay, so how long is the flight? Uh, it'll be five hours. Okay, I'm gonna take off at three, let's say, right? So, okay, if I, okay, you arrive there at 8 p.m. And when my clock hits 8 p.m., she'll be landing at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. on her clock. Because, you know, how fast does the airplane travel? 500 miles an hour, six, 700 miles an hour, something like that, it's nowhere close to the speed of light. So the time that it took her to make that trip and the time that it took me for her to make that trip, even though we're in two different frames of references, is the same. So we say that the ticking of time is just absolute, as Newton thought. But only because that is only okay, and that is what we're used to, only because um, she's never moving closer to the speed of light. For, the, for this two time intervals to not be the same. So Einstein said, well, when you're talking about the, the, the rocket going at half the speed of light and the light itself, the speeds are so big that uh, this has to be wrong. 
And and there's a reason, you know, he you know, all of these were thought experiments that Einstein did. I mean, it's not like he got on a truck that could travel at half the speed of light and then oh, this is what it is. But he was just like, imagine I were doing this, right? So you know, like, so one thing just to give you a, a, a typical example, we are in this room, right? We're in this room. And suppose that we find the middle of this room. Let's say the middle of this room is right here. So the distance from here to the wall is the same as the distance from here to the wall. Right? So what happens if there's a light bulb over here and I click, I turn it on. So light is going to go in all directions, right? If I consider the light going that way and the light going that way, they both travel at, well, the speed of light because it's light at the speed C. But this distance from here to there is the same as the distance from here to there. So what we will, if we could follow this in very, very slow motion, we will see the light beam going in opposite directions and they'll hit the walls simultaneously. Because they travel the same distance and they both travel at the same speed. So to us, if I want to know what was the difference in the arrival of the times of the two light beams of the walls, we will say, oh, delta T is zero. You know, it hit over there at some instant of time, but it hit over there at the same instant of time, delta T is zero. So that's us in this room, in this frame of reference. That would be like, here is a, this is the room. Here we are. We turn down the light over here, and then it travels this way and this way. And to us, delta T is zero. Right? I mean, it just hits at the same time. Like t, this is T is equal to zero, right? Now, let's think of this as being a rocket. So I'm going to call this delta T prime is equal to zero. But now the rocket is going by, and it's going by very fast. Let's say half the speed of light, 70% of the speed of light, right? And as the rocket goes by, right, somebody's over here at rest, outside that frame of reference, in another frame of reference. So this person over here on the ground, at rest, to this person, the light is not going to hit the back wall and the front wall simultaneously. Because to this person, the whole thing is moving to the right, and as this light travels this way, and this light travels this way, the whole thing is shifting that way, so a little later, you know, the back wall is going to be here, and the front wall is going to be here. So what will happen is that to this person, the light is going to hit the back wall first, and then that one is going to hit later. So to this person, delta T is not equal to zero. So the time interval measure between two events are not the same in two different frames of references. So Einstein said it's got to be that it's got to be that this is wrong. So he began to think about the issue of simultaneity, right? To this person, to us in this room, right? We do the experiment, right? We have a light source over here, right in the middle of the wall, right? Tick, click the light, turn it on, light goes, boom, boom, same instant, right? So delta T is zero. That's to us. But what if we were in, what, what if this room were, I don't know, in a, a room in a spaceship that can travel at half the speed of flight or something like that? And as we go that way, someone outside the spaceship watches the same two events, the arrival of the light on this wall and the arrival of the light on that wall. To that person, the light didn't hit at the same time. So the time measurement between the intervals as measured by that person is not the same. Uh, to us, it's simultaneous, but to them, it is not simultaneous. So therefore, the ticking of time is different depending on how fast you're going through space. But it's something that you only notice if, again, the speeds involved are very big compared to the speed of light, oh, are comparable to the speed of light in time. So Einstein said, this equation, right, this one here, that. People teaching physics 185, right? It's really an approximation. It's an approximation when this is okay. Which, for the motion of objects, baseballs, airplanes, planets, you know, it's okay. You know, we don't need special relativity for that. Uh, 
And the question is, what should it become then if, um, if the velocities involved are close to the speed of light? So how do we fix that? So Einstein considered the same problem as this, and he did a derivation, which is now known as the Einstein transformation equations. So this, he changed. Uh, and uh, and then he did the same sort of analogy here. And I think in one of, the, so I'm gonna write down this here. Actually, there was a guy by the name of Lorenz who also worked on this. Um, and um, they're also known as the Lorenz transformation equations. 